Hello, this is Mark Tucker, and this is a multi-part tutorial series on APL components that I've created just for the viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we're going to go over the incredible, flexible, invisible container. Let's get started. I'm here in APL.ninja, and this is a great tool for uh, working with APL, and I will make this uh, document public and available in the description here of the video, so you could just follow right along. When you create an APL document, the first thing that you're going to do is come down here to the main template section and you want to define your root container. Now a container is a component in APL that is non-visual. Its whole purpose is to define boundaries and uh, provide areas where other components can live. What we're doing is setting up this root or parent container with a width of 100 VW and 100 VH. And this means 100% of the viewport width and 100% of the viewport height. If you look over here on the right hand side, we'll see a viewport that represents an Echo Show 5 and you can see what its width and height looks like here. Uh, but we can also look at an Echo Show 1 um, through various different um, types of uh, devices. And you'll notice that depending on which device we're on, that the viewport size is going to change. Every component in APL has a type. And so the fact that the type is defined as container, then we know that this is a, a container component. APL is based on JSON. So um, things that you'd see in JSON being um, objects, arrays, um, properties with key values, and the values can be of type string, uh, boolean, or um, or um, number, then those are that's that's uh, what we're working with. But actually, each of these properties have a type uh, defined in APL. So, for example, this width and height are dimension properties, and it's actually a, uh, an absolute uh, type of dimension because we're defining 100% absolutely of whatever the value is for the viewport width and height. <clears throat> if we go down here to the um, item section, so it can container has child items and in this case we have three different frames defined one that's going to be pink with a certain width and height um, orange and then blue and those are the components that are going to be displayed in here but no, they're, they're not just displayed so what's going on if we look at the width and height once again these are dimensions but it's using this at syntax you know at box width at box height <clears throat> And the color is set to at pink. So let's go ahead and into our resource section and we'll see under dimensions, resources, dimensions, then we, we have right now the width and height set to zero. And then the colors we have uh, defined to certain colors. So if we were to change the width and height to 120, then we'll see that the boxes or frames are showing up in, uh, in our parent control. So box width is, um, like we said before, is a, um, a dimension and it's an absolute dimension type. Um, so don't be confused at the fact that it's represented by a number um, because you know, that's different. Because um, you could also look at uh, 120 here as a string. It's the same thing and 120 DP, which means display independent pixels. So all three of those things are, are three different ways in JSON to represent the same uh, property, which in this case is a width, which is of type and, uh, of an absolute dimension type. So uh, display independent pixels, if you notice you know, how much space those three boxes take in, in you know, relationship to the whole Echo Show 5 hub space here, the viewport. <clears throat> but if we go through and look at different hubs, then you can see how the display independent pixels change based on um, you know, what, we've, what, uh, what hub we're on and it's based also on how many dots per inch each of the hubs um, allows for. So that's going to uh, cover that area. One of the things that you'll also notice is that right off the bat that things are just laid down from top to bottom. And that is because of the direction property. Now by default, direction is defined as column. 
and it defines that the main uh, axis is going to be from um, vertical and from top to bottom. So if we were to change direction to row, then we'll notice that the main axis now has changed to horizontal from left to right. Uh, we can also define uh, row reverse. So now it's, also, it's horizontal from right to left. Um, or we can go ahead and change that to um, column reverse. And that's going to you know, take the same values and go from bottom to top. So now pink is flush at the bottom and going up. Uh, let's go ahead and change that back to column. This first property where we're going to look at is justify content. Now justify content has to do with the main axis. And so since we have direction set to column, the main axis is vertical. So this is going to, to indicate how are the child components laid out on that main axis. Um, so default is, um, we had it all the way at the top. Um, we have a center, we can do start, and we can do end. And so you can see how it's grouping on that main axis uh, where things are laid out. So let's go ahead and change that back to center. Uh, the align items property has to deal with the cross axis. So in this case, the uh, direction is, is um, column. So the main axis is vertical. So the um, cross axis is going to be horizontal. So instead of at the start, like we have here, we can uh, specify that that's uh, center. We've done this before, you know, same properties, start and so that's how things work with lining things out on the cross axis. Let's go ahead and change that back to center. So now we have things centered both horizontally and vertically um, within the parent comp uh, component. And that parent comp component said that it wants its height and width to be the whole height and width of the viewport. We have a couple of other properties, um, values that we can use for justify content. So notice we have space on the uh, top and the bottom here. What if we didn't want uh, that space there? We could define uh, space and uh, let's do space between. Notice that the first one, the pink one is flushed to the top, the blue box is uh, flushed to the bottom, and then any of that extra space that we had is uh, spaced uh, between those two um, you know, boxes, so everything uh, is, uh, space there. Another way that we can look at is, is take that space and we can have that space be around. So it takes that whole space, puts the, you know, we notice that just above the pink and below the blue looks like it's the same and then twice that size in between. So everything is, uh, has space all around it so that um, everything's laid out nice that direction. So that is the direction and justify content. Let's go ahead and uh, look at um, the display property. So if we wanted to make the, the pink box go away, we could set the display property to none. And it makes it so that the whole space is gone, like that doesn't even exist. Um, you know, if you're you've done web programming, then that's uh, that might be familiar to you. The normal or default setting is normal, and then you also have a value called invisible. So it takes up the space as if the pink one was there. It just doesn't show it. It's invisible. So let's take a look at um, another way of, of doing that. Let's say that we have this opacity property. So we see the pink one there. It can accept a value between 0 and 1. Uh, so if it's 0, it's, it behaves quite a bit like this uh, display property set to invisible. Um, or you can set the property to like 0 0.5. So notice that it's blending this color that was pink with the background color. Um, at, you know, 50%. So we can, uh, you know, increase that up to 80%, all the way up to um, one. And by default, the opacity is set to one anyway. All right, good. So that's, that talks about the opacity. Let's talk about um, 
So a lot of the things with laying out, we've talked about by setting properties on the parent container. Because these um, frame components are children of the parent, there's additional properties that those components get. And one of them is this align self. So let's see how that affects, um, align self affects um, this pink box here. <clears throat> By setting it to, to start, what we're saying is take this one um, out of you know, what's been defined for the parent and we're going to treat that a little differently. We're going to say that's going to go ahead and get aligned at the start, um, you know, back to center or to end. You know, and and uh, just remember that whatever we're doing here applies um, you know, kind of on the other axis if we were to change this to row then it's the same, um, same type of thing here that uh, it affects start, center, end on that as well. So that is the um, align self property. Some other properties that we have that relate to this positioning is top, bottom, left, and right. So we're talking about, once again, just this one uh, pink frame. So if we were to change the top property to 30, then what it's what's happening is it's like we've added 30 to the top and we've pushed it down, but we're, we haven't changed. It's, it's just kind of overlapping kind of underneath now um, the, the uh, value here. So even though things are laid out in the child component as you know, pink, orange, and blue, and their siblings, there is still kind of a layer to it. So um, depending on what you do, it's going to lay down the pink, and then it's going to lay down the orange, then it's going to lay down the, um, the blue. So that's what top does. If we were to, to do the other property, bottom, then it's like adding 30 to the bottom, and it's pushing the, the, the box up a little bit. Uh, same thing with left, pushes it over to the right. Or if you add uh, 30 to the right, then it pushes it over to the left. So those are you know, kind of how we can control some of the different um, properties here. There's still more to cover about containers, such as absolute positioning and wrapping, and we're going to do that in the next episode. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please let me know with a like or a share. Thank you for watching.